Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name's Jono. Another Photoshop tutorial for you this time, and one I get asked about a lot, and that's how to get multiple instances of yourself or someone else in the same photograph. Um, it can be achieved a number of different ways, but the way I'm going to show you uh, means that you should better try it yourself with just minimal equipment, phone camera, something to hold it steady, and uh, obviously Photoshop. So let's waste no time, let's take a look. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. Before I go on, um, just a bit of explanation about what I'm doing here. So we're looking to clone someone. I'm, I'm using myself, but um, I've done this shot for both my children when they were younger. I've done something similar for my grandchildren, and they get a real kick out of seeing themselves multiple times in the same photographs. Um, normally referred to as cloning yourself. Uh, some people call these shots multiplicity, uh, named after... Um, the film, a uh, comedy film from a few years ago, um, Michael Keaton uh, starring in it. But whatever you call it, the effect is the same. What we're looking to do is take multiple shots of uh, someone and then composite those into one uh, final image. Um, as you can see, I've got an image of myself uh, sat on a couch. I'll come back to the image in a moment. Um, but I've actually got three images here stacked as layers. And again, more on that in a second. If I hide this top layer and uh, you can see there's another version of me over here and if I hide that one uh, you've actually got another version of me over here. Um, the actual taking of the photograph is almost as important as the work we do in Photoshop. A couple of things that we need to remember when we're taking photographs. First of all the location that you're shooting in. You can obviously do this outdoors um, and it offers you much more freedom. Uh, difficulty with being outdoors is um, the light can change quite easily. You can see by being inside, I can control the lighting uh, much easier. Um, I haven't got to worry about clouds going over. I haven't got to worry about shadows so much, um, sun movement, etc. Um, so think carefully about your location before you do it. Uh, it might just save you some work. Second thing you need to remember is to not um, move the camera. We need to actually have it locked off. So um, I just used my phone and I had it put onto a small tripod so there was no movement there. So each of the three photographs is taken from exactly the same position. It's only me that moved. Um, obviously, if you do move the camera at all, it's going to make your life much more difficult getting the photographs lined up together. Um, and lastly, um, your exposure settings. Um, I have an option on my phone, as I'm sure many of you do, and indeed more um, uh, more sophisticated cameras to actually set everything to manual. So once you've got your focus set, once you've got your lighting set, your, your um, aperture, etc., to lock that, to set it to manual so it doesn't change in between shots. You don't want one shot being, you know, brighter than another because uh, it'll spoil the effect and it will obviously, you know, um, be more work for you to try and fix that. Other than that, obviously, you've got pretty much freedom to do whatever you like. I've just done some of uh, three simple shots here. So I've named my layers accordingly, uh, which is useful if you've got a lot more versions of yourself. Um, then you obviously need to um, make more layers and, and it, naming them will obviously help uh, you remember which part of the image that you're working on. So as I say, this is my center shot. This one is me on the right. And then this final one is me on the left. Um, obviously you can have many more versions of yourself or whoever you're taking this of uh, I've done this I've done this quite quickly in order to try and keep it nice and simple just for the purposes of the tutorial just one other thing that you might consider um, before uh, doing this or while you're planning your shots is to try and avoid um, you overlapping yourself and I'll show you what I mean if I just reduce the opacity down on this shot so it shows um, a little bit of both and if I do the same thing on the one below so that you can see all three images um, I'm not overlapping myself here if I were to be overlapping myself it wouldn't be the end of the world we could um, uh, fix that but it's offering a little bit more work and so um, for your uh, initial ones, you might consider just keeping uh, all your images completely separate. Um, uh, it'll just make your life a little bit easier. Once you've practiced, obviously feel free to experiment and, uh, uh, and make it a little bit more complex because it certainly adds a little bit more realism to uh, the final shot. Okay, so let's, uh, let's just set the 
uh, opacity back to uh, 100% and uh, let's get started on uh, the work. So using a brush, um, what we're going to basically do is be painting out um, parts of these layers to allow us to see the, uh, the layer come through from underneath. Um, what we're going to be using is masks, which I've uh, covered before in some of my other tutorials, because um, we only want to sort of paint out some of the image, obviously, to allow um, uh, the layer underneath to come through. Um, a couple of things to consider. First of all is the size of the brush. So we can alter the size of our brush. We can make it smaller or make it bigger by using what I call the square bracket key. So the, the two just to the right of the P on your keyboard. Um, so open bracket reduces the size of the brush and close bracket uh, makes it bigger again. The other thing that we um, need to think about is also the hardness of the brush. So uh, we can do that by clicking upon the brush tool here uh, and reducing hardness. We want it relatively soft. Uh, and what that's going to basically do is give softer edges. So rather than sort of painting harsh lines, uh, it's going to give us a bit more of a blending. Just make sure your flow is set to 100 um, and the opacity is set to 100 as well, though, before you proceed. Next thing we're going to do is to check our color palette. We're just going to be working in black and white. So if you've seen my other videos, you'll remember um, that black and white are the two colors that affect a mask. Um, and I can demonstrate that if I apply a mask, let's, uh, let's just turn off this top layer and just work on um, this layer here, first of all. So we've just got the two, um, the right and the left left and the right. Um, I'm going to paint on over this guy first. If I uh, apply a mask to this, so just clicking on the little button down here to apply a mask, make sure the mask itself is selected. So not the image, it's the mask that we're actually going to be painting. So over here, uh, if we just click this little button here, it'll make sure that we're definitely set to black and white. Um, and we can either use X on our keyboard to switch between the black being the foreground color or the white being the foreground color. Black, let's reduce my bus size a little bit. Black will remove. Okay, so you can see over here, I'm painting in black. That will be removing this person. If I change back to white, that's going to bring the detail back again. OK, so make sure that any other color is not going to affect it. So what I'm looking to do is basically making sure the mask is selected is paint this guy out. All right, because what we're going to do is allow the image below, which will be me on the left, to come through. OK. Once I painted everything out, we're going to reverse the mask. So at the moment, it's black uh, that's removed, white is everything is still there. We actually actually want to reverse that so that uh, it's just this part that will show through and everything else will disappear. And we can do that by pressing Control I. Control I is to invert the mask, and you can see now the colors have actually inverted, and this has brought us back. This has been nice and easy. There is no um, separate, uh, what's the word? There's no proximity between the guy on the right and the guy on the left. They're completely separate. It's not causing us any difficulty at all. We might find it a little more difficult when we come to move, uh, come to work on the center person, which is what we're gonna do next, obviously. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn back on the center layer and we're going to obviously make sure it's selected. And again, we're going to apply a mask to it. Make sure the mask is selected, not the image. All right, so you get the little box around it. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to take our brush. I'm going to perhaps just reduce the size a little bit because obviously the other guy is just here. I don't want to accidentally bring it, um, bring him back into the picture, but I'll show you what happens if that does, uh, does, uh, does occur. But just carefully paint this fella out. Okay. Let's make the uh, brush a bit bigger so that I can definitely remove it all. Now we've got a bit of a problem with the cushions here, but we'll fix that in a moment because obviously me being sat on them has caused them to compress. But we'll fix that in a moment. Okay, make sure it's all done. Same thing again, Control-I to invert it. 
uh, and that brings him back. And actually the, the cushion thing has caused a little bit of a problem here. But what we can do is if I just zoom in, we can zoom in if you've got a, um, a scroll wheel on your mouse, you can hit Alt and then just use the scroll wheel to zoom in. I'm um, gonna reduce my brush. And I think what we'll do is actually make the brush uh, fully uh, much harder just to give it a bit more of a defined line. But I'm just gonna try and fix that issue with the cushion here so that it doesn't look like it's causing some kind of warp in the time-space continuum. I'm just going to move it down a little bit here. So it's obviously, it's much, uh, much more of a problem there, whoops. Luckily, it's quite dark down here, so it's not uh, as noticeable as perhaps it would have been. Okay, let's just uh, scroll back out. Again, hold out, Alt rather, and then you can scroll back out. I'm just going to center that. Uh, yeah, God, I thought I had a little bit of an issue over here as well, so we'll just do the same thing. Let's just zoom in a little bit. See, if I wasn't so fat, <laughs> cushions wouldn't have uh, wouldn't have compressed as much, but that looks much better. Okay. Just making sure of that. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Uh, looks pretty good. Um, so as far as the cloning uh, aspect of, of the image is concerned, we're, we're done. Um, obviously, if you've got more layers, you'll, you'll take a little bit more time. But just, yeah, take it easy and, and obviously work uh, nice and carefully rather than the way I'm doing it at the moment. I'm sort of... Uh, um, trying to hurry it along for the purposes of the tutorial. Um, one thing I'm going to do, because the overall uh, look of the image is a little bit orangey because of uh, took it under artificial light or whatever else, um, we can um, improve that a little bit. Got nothing to do with cloning. It's more just to do with uh, general Photoshop use, but I'm going to put an adjustment layer on here. Um, change color balance a little bit. Um, we'll just take out some of the... Uh, some of the red and the orange, whatever else, and just make it a little bit more natural looking, hopefully. Don't want to go too crazy. Um, and what I'll do is just um, put a, a curve on there just to try and change contrast a little bit. So a curves layer. Uh, and we're just going to um, put a little bit, oops, not that much, a little bit of uh, contrast into the image. just to try and improve it a little bit. Obviously, a lot of that is to taste. It's just uh, uh, giving you an idea of what's possible, that kind of thing. But there we go. I'm just going to um, scroll out a little bit and uh, just perhaps uh, give you a better, better idea. Um, but there we go. Happy with that. Once you're happy with your image, uh, obviously, we just need to save that as a JPEG or, or whatever your preferred format is. And there you go. So there you go. I hope that makes sense to you. Um, obviously, give it a try and play around, and I'd love to see the results. Thank you once again for all your support. I really do appreciate it. If you haven't already, hit the like button, please subscribe, and don't forget to ring the bell for future notifications. Until next time, take care of yourselves.